We go to my number six tight end in the 2021 NFL Draft, and it's Boston College tight end Hunter Long. And so Hunter Long is a guy that stands at 6'5", 254, and he's a much better athlete than I think you get to see on film. Don't think you actually get to see the full spectrum of what he can do. I don't love his short area quickness or his ability to separate or any of that stuff, but get him in a straight line and let him run and open up. I think this is a guy that can scoot, and that that was evident by the 40 time that he was able to post. So I think there may be more here to Hunter Long than I'm giving him credit for as my number six tight end, but uh, I wasn't massively in love with what I saw from him. I feel like he's a guy that could end up turning into a really good NFL tight end, but he could also just be a guy. He could just be a a jag, essentially, just an average guy. And so it's hard for me to to stomach a guy like Hunter Long when I, I look at him and I say, hey, he could be really good. He could be one of these guys that in, you know, four years we're talking about him as a Kyle Rudolph or a Zach Ertz type. Um, or in three, four years, we could be talking about him being a journeyman tight end that's barely hanging on by a threat. So uh, we'll see what happens. Let's flip his card over, though, and talk about it. And so the first thing we talk about with Hunter Long is he's a height, weight, speed specimen, and he classifies for that at 6'5", 254, and running a 4'6", 340. And I talked about the speed element of the tight end position, and when, once you get sub 4'7", that's speed in the NFL at the tight end position. Don't allow, you know, the 4-4-4s and the 4-4-1s that some of these guys are able to run to cloud your judgment on what's fast and what's not fast at the tight end position. 4-6-3 is plenty fast at the tight end position. Some of the best tight ends, as I've mentioned over and over again, aren't sub-4-7 guys. When you start talking Zach Ertz and you start talking about some of the guys that have been Uh, big separators at the NFL level, the Jason Wittens of the world over the last decade. These aren't four, seven guys. These are four, seven, five, four, seven, seven dudes that just make a living separating with shrewd route running ability and and the little, you know, nicks and knacks and the, the subtleties to the game of how to push off, lean on the defender to create that extra bit of separation. Uh, Maybe Hunter Long will develop that, that, but he doesn't have to right now because he's got, um, some speed to, to hurt you vertical, and hopefully that'll open up some things underneath for him. Uh, he's got good hands, respectable hands. I, there were some drops on tape, but there were few and far between. They're not enough for me to ding him and, and, and note that as um, something that is a problem and a weakness for me. Uh, he's got respectable hands, though. Um, he, they could be better. They could be better. He competes as a blocker. Again, uh, I think he's a guy that, um, is physical enough at the point of attack. There's enough here to work with. He's not a guy that's shy uh, about contact or any of that. So I think he's a guy, and as long as you're willing to compete as a blocker, I've got a foundation foundation as a coach from which to work with and from. Uh, I feel good about you. I, I feel like I can do something with you, and he's one of those guys. Uh, can find a soft spot in zone coverage. Knows how to sit down, make himself available, show his numbers to the quarterback, um, he's a big guy already at 6'5", 255. So he's an inviting target as is. But it's good to know that if they're playing zone coverage, my guy knows where to sit down, make himself available. On second and seven, he knows how to sit down right at the sticks, get us the first down. On third and five, he knows how to get us six and move the sticks. So um, knows how to sit down and find the soft spots in zone coverage. Uh, can catch the football in traffic. I will tell you, however... Um, the drops that I saw from him were in traffic, but I did see him catch the football more times in traffic than not catch it in traffic. So again, I'm not going to ding him, but that is something. The reason I didn't just put catch catches it in traffic is because, and I had to put can, is because there were some misses from him in traffic that uh, I'd like to see him clean up. He can get vertical, and the 463 reiterates that hammers that home that he can get vertical but any slight bump of him at the line of scrimmage or any um, hand fighting with him or if someone lays hands on him you can impede his progress and you can stay right in his hip pocket he doesn't have the acceleration doesn't have the quickness uh, to get defenders off of him I I think the best game if you really want to see 
how someone can really impact Hunter Long. Go watch the North Carolina game. Their safety was in his jersey the entire game, and it was simply because he was physical with Hunter Long from the jump. And Hunter Long isn't a separator, so that guy was never, ever fully threatened by his speed down the field, and he's not afraid of his ability to break him off one, two steps, Sierra style, and create separation. So he was in his chest. He was in his jersey the entire game. And there were drops in that game because of it. I, that was the game that made me focus on, hey, man, how many targets did this guy have anyway? Because in that North Carolina game, it felt like he had like 20 targets in that game. And he only had like seven or eight grabs. Felt like a bunch of targets, not a lot of catches. And I said, how many targets did he have in 2020? Because he's getting an awful lot of, of, of opportunities that a lot of tight ends in college football wish they were getting that, that they simply aren't. So uh, he could get vertical, but you can stay with him vertically. Again, if he gets a free release, no one touches him, yeah, he can get vertical on you in a hurry. Formational flex, another one of these guys. Look, this goes without saying for just about every tight end in this draft and really any tight end in college football coming to the pro ranks you're going to have formational flex. These guys move around. They're not stationary. The days of just lining up in line as a wide, traditional wide tight end are over in college football. Uh, if you're one of those guys, more likely than not, you're getting drafted in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, more likely than not. Uh, if you're looking to be drafted in the first two uh, uh, days of the draft, you got to have formational flex. And uh, Hunter Long is a guy that moves all around the formation. Uh, another one of these um, why uh, one of these wing tight ends, one of these guys that's not usually on the line of scrimmage, um, can flex him out, can do a lot of different things with him. And so um, that goes without saying. Production and 2020 volume. So his production throughout his career was pretty consistent, especially the last two seasons uh, where this guy had 85 catches for 1,194 yards and average rate around 15 yards per pop and seven touchdowns over the last two years and so uh, the production has been really solid for him throughout his entire career and then the 2020 volume was something that I noticed I talked about that with the North Carolina game and it really made me to do a little bit of digging and deep diving and what I found was is this guy had uh, 89 targets which was by far and away the most in college football for any tight end in the entire nation. And, you know, you know, when you go back to 2019 with all the tight ends, there were guys that had 100, you know, catches in that season. That, you know, but that's unheard of really at the tight end position. You know, but when you look at Hunter Long and what he brings to the table, and this is a guy that had 89 targets, which was 22 more than any other tight end across the nation. So, I mean, he was targeted a ton. It was a high volume amount of targets going in his direction. And while I wasn't really thrilled with the uptick in yardage from all the targets that he got, he his numbers went up across the board. You know, almost 30 more receptions than the year previous. Um, the yardage didn't really see the jump that you would like with that many targets, but that went up as well. That increased. And the touchdowns increased. So his numbers increased all the way across the board. Uh, so he really took advantage of all of those targets that came his way. Weaknesses. Lacks true suddenness to separate. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice with him r very early on watching him is he's stiff. He's a stiff route runner. He doesn't give you any sticks at the top of the route. No shoulder fakes. He doesn't try. To, he tells you where he's going right away. Right? And that takes us right to our next weakness. No deception in his route running. Like the reason that, that the, the safety for North Carolina or really any game that I watched him in, guys were able to be either right there to break it up, make it a difficult catch for him, or hit him upon him catching the football is because he didn't sell the route. He's running a speed cut. And Lord, normally when you run a speed cut, there is no selling it. You just, you just roll out. You, know, you get to your five and you roll out. You don't, you don't stick your foot in the ground. You just roll it. But... There are times where he's running an in-breaking route, and you're like, hey, dude, sell him the outside. Give him some outside shoulder, head and shoulders. Give him a little dandruff, and then go inside. And he just rolls it inside, and they're right there with him because he didn't give them anything to think about. So 
uh, a lot of his route running is just bland, and it makes it easy for a guy to know exactly where he's going um, and try to beat him to that spot. Not much of a threat after the catch. He's not a make-you-miss guy. He's not a run-by-you guy. He's not a run-over-you guy, for that matter. He's a guy that catches it, and if there's space and opportunity, he might make something happen. But outside of that, he's not going to do much with the football in his hand. And finally, he will have the occasional drop. I, I mentioned that already. I'm not going to really uh, harp on it too much because uh, I think his hands are, are fine. But there, there is the occasional drop from a guy of his stature. You don't expect that. So I'd like to see him clean it up. And really, for the most part in this draft, not a lot of drops with these tight ends. So, you know, when you see guys drop in, in of all the positions on the field that you're throwing the football to, running back, wide receivers, the tight end is the one guy you're like, hey, I can't have you dropping the football because you're the, you're the safety blanket. You're the guy that the quarterback's looking for on first and 10, and it's a simple check down over the ball. He's looking for you for a five, six-yard gain to get the, you know, that set of downs started or to get into a very manageable second down or even third down situation. Or if it's third and five, he's looking at you to quickly set up shop at the sticks and get it to you. You got to catch the football as a tight end. Got to catch the football as a tight end at the NFL level. So my projection for him is a day two selection. I think he'll go. I personally wouldn't be comfortable spending a pick on him until the third round. I can see somebody uh, snatching him up late second, though. Wouldn't shock me, but I think he's more of a third round selection than a second rounder. My comp for him is Max Williams. Um, I look at him and I see a lot of Max Williams in Hunter Long, I remember Max Williams coming out of Minnesota. Wasn't that big of a Max Williams fan, but if you remember, that was a terrible tight end draft that year, so much so that uh, the draft advisory board told Max Williams to go back to school, and he t decided to come out anyway because he realized there's nothing in this draft stopping me from being the first tight end taken, and he ultimately was in the second round. So I could see, I see a lot of Max Williams' height athleticism, ball skills in Hunter Long. Uh, I didn't love Max Williams. Max Williams has had a very average career to this point. Uh, and I could see the same thing happening to Hunter Long. Hopefully he's a little bit more successful than that of Max Williams. But I think their attributes are very similar entering the league. Hunter Long right now is my sixth rated tight end in the 2021 NFL. Draft. Movie Team Network.